We're definitely an eccentric group of individuals. That's extremely high praise from the man who saved the world. Wow, imagine. What was his code name? Richie Rich? <laughs> Jing just does his own thing. Oh, a new opening. Wow, there's just so much going on. I like the money guy already because he's blonde. First of all, I'm so excited to see Jing. So excited to see these these zodiacs because they've got to be something truly remarkable to have gotten Netero's attention. Also, while I have such conflicting feelings about Netero and his final decision, from a certain perspective, he's the man who saved humanity. For those that loved him, God, what a mixed feeling. The tragedy, the honor, the thanks, the love. How do you follow in his footsteps? And also I was thinking it's Netero. There's something very, very specific and meticulously crafted crafted about this whole election process. The video he made was sort of casual, but I bet there's nothing casual about this. So that in essence, he's still controlling things from beyond the grave. And there he is. Oh yeah, we're about to get characters, of which Jing is one. God, it's such a long time since the new opening. Oh, it's Kite. I'm really glad they're still around. I'm really glad. Oh yeah, Leorio. <laughs> Leorio. Oh, the butler's back. Ahsoka's back! Yes! Best character. A lot of people making a comeback. Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to be watching this. Oops. Too late. Love interest? No. <laughs> Best love interest since Bisky. You. Alright, I'll try to keep an open mind about Jing, even if he's not winning any Father of the Year awards. Debate X among X Zodiacs. Yeah, I didn't expect this. And they hung out in the leisure time, too. Ox. Oh, of course, they're animals. Wow, what in the fruits basket? <laughs> oh, oh, Jing has lines, he has dialogue. I legitimately was concerned that the show would end without Jing being present. This is the last arc. I'm so glad that he's included. Also, this strikes me as a very golden thing to say. Not the threat necessarily, but the fact that he got so riled up. But I mean, if the shoe fits. Not showing up. Who, me? When have I ever not shown up for someone? Hey, oh, that is the rat. Yeah. We're taking charge. Because he's sitting at the head of the table, obviously. You all chose your seats. But then I did. I doubt this will be finished quickly. Very tactical. <laughs> Can't blame me later. <laughs> he picked the people who he knew wouldn't object, maybe. Oh, that's true. This is... I mean, it's not even a tactic. Like, it just is good sometimes. Concede things that you know will either not be an obstacle to your goals or that nobody will accept. To create an image of goodwill and common goals and to obfuscate the actual intention. It's related to a usage of the thing we've seen so much in the show of binary choices. It's like, you can have this or you can have this. That's surprisingly effective in railroading people into two things that you are okay with. On the non-tactical coercion side, making your intentions very clear very early. Establishes trust, bulldozes future obstacles and impediments to your goal. Especially because when brought up way in advance, or when things are not critical and people don't feel the emotion so clearly of hating what you're suggesting, they're more likely to agree out of surprise and not caring about it as much as they will later. But then later when it comes up, you say, I told you I said I would do this and now I'm doing it and you're backing out on your word. As well as giving yourself the personal conviction that you're not being sneaky, even if you're being sneaky. I think about this more than I ever have these days because I'm in a position where for one reason or the other, I constantly have to negotiate for things that I want despite some built-in headwinds to that. Buttering people up also goes a long way. Doing a lot more than is expected very noticeably followed by doing a lot less than is expected. Unnoticed, sometimes goes a really long way. Also somewhat effective, testing the line of how valued you are and then having the leverage based on actual conviction that you can walk at any time. And one thing that speaks very strongly to my first impression of Rat, covering everything with universal 
positivity in all discussion and all interaction for the obvious reason that people just like pleasantness, but also for the less obvious reason that having an unplanned, sudden, instinctive, negative reaction to something against somebody who has a very calm and pleasant demeanor makes the aggressor feel weak and terrible. There have been a bunch of times over the course of my life where I have felt I have been wronged and my anger is justified, but my anger is met with what seems like genuine calm and pleasantness. And then even I start to doubt the validity of my, my claims. Interesting. Feels like this dude came in here with a plan. Interesting. He really cares. What a great guy. Unbroken smile. Oh, this is sinister. Unbroken smile. Why would death ever be unexpected? Mm. That's sort of weak evidence though. I mean, like, he's probably guilty. But people do this. This is a reporting tactic. The way they'll phrase the headline is thousand percent increase in something, but then it's like it went from one to ten, which is probably just statistical noise and not pattern if the sample set is sufficiently large, I think. Recently in Korea, the increased prevalence of drug use has become big news, and I don't know the details at all. It may very well be a growing problem, but I've seen the increase in incidents being reported in percents, which is not really telling of the extent of the problem. Something else that I think does not apply to this example, but is connected to this idea. I think what a lot of people miss about crime reporting in particular, the number you see is not actually the incidence of, of the crime or whatever it is. It's the number of of arrests made for the thing, which obviously can really distort the reading of how prevalent the thing is becoming. Like with drug use in South Korea, again, it may very well be a growing thing. It's possible that as more attention is drawn to it, more resources are dedicated to it, and so there are more arrests made. It's hard to know for sure. Oh, he's not smiling. Strategically. <laughs> and smiling. I was thinking he was unusually quiet. I question your dedication, honestly. Don't you need to like be places on in specific times? <laughs> well, no love for Jing, huh? Since you aren't. This is deliberate. Even though he's saying this with a pleasant face. Because he has my DNA. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> if he dies, it was his mother's DNA. <laughs> He's controlling this very well. He's making this happen on his terms, one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Don't let him lead if you don't like it. Netero did all of this deliberately. He knew this was going to happen. He wanted the chaos. There's actually another voting method that works really well. It's like a uh, numbered ranking. But let's say since there are 12 of them, you rank who you want to be chairman from number one to number 12, each with a different point value. So you can make first place 12 points or whatever. Then you tally the total points across members and the person with the most points means it's like the most agreeable in a certain way of thinking about it. But that's way too simple for anything that comes out of the Hunter Association. Beans, my boy, beans. Why? What's the benefit of that? What do you want? What's your angle? Complex. They think way faster than I do. And they're thinking about this while writing. I need to digest that for a minute. Beans! It was always you, Beans. I mean, yes and no. I mean, like, you're just speaking randomly. Or are you? She's intense. Someone stacked the deck somewhere. I mean, this is... They got Nen. There's some Nen for this. Ahsoka did it. Hmm, that's suspicious. I don't know Jing's Nen yet, but it's very suspicious. And it looked like he knew. He's looking like he knew. Oh, his smile faded a little bit. The mask cracking. This is how I imagine Gon being in an election as well. Sort of how I do my Patreon polls. 
誰が誰に入れたか分かった方が面白いに決まってんだろう。ガスブスが。こいつは自分が楽しむことさかい。<笑> As expected, Jing, the ultimate end user, life is just a playground. And I get really, really angry when it's not. That's the freak's way. ルールのみに目をとらわれすぎた。これぞジンの真の狙い。Hiding the goal with another goal. Deception X Deception. No. Rule 4 made a tomokak, second show, but a petty himel cotter show. Jayon made the easy. Mhm. Collega Hanta. Super intense. Osoroshi. It's interesting. It's a really cool choice to have Jing and Rat head to head, both with extreme intensity but very different emotions. God, this is hitting me that the mining games were bad enough with the lower level hunters we've already seen. This is 12 of the top level hunters engaged in high stakes mining games with each other. I can't imagine how many layers deep this goes. This is more complex than Gunji. I also think it's kind of funny that I started out the show like, oh, and then his life. And then as the show continued, it gradually just became more and more directly, literally life. <laughs> like in the last arc, Poof was saying the best. <laughs> Magic is manipulation, etc. All of them must have insane Nen and combat abilities. But, like, the, the real challenge and execution of their abilities is in this political war. A flashback? A flashback now? Yo. So warm, so friendly. He must really care. Thanks for this coming. You'll find out, Beans. You'll find out. Did he set this up with Beans? I love how that's universally without question the reason that everyone immediately has a consensus on. It just takes too long. We got Nan stuff to do. この He's been wheeling and dealing for a long time. 呼ばれても髪の折り方が違ってたら、俺は下を向いてるから、その髪は燃やしてくれ。あ、そう、staring at him。それを五番目に置いとけば、ちょっと待てって話になる。それで俺がルールを取り下げれば、ルール四までが通りやすいだろう。Did I say that? Use a concession. 詐欺師の上等手段さ。No, no, oh no, Jing, why? I feel attacked. 狙った通りに獲物が動けば。This is a hunter. Cheng <laughs> is in it for the lulls, and I'll destroy anything that gets in the way. Birdmaster over here. Do all of them have animal related quirks? Wait a minute. Oh man, I missed this. What is Jing's animal? Is it just Jing? Jing is his own animal? Ah, oh, he's the boar. That fits. Going to be a little bit pig headed. This would be really hard to do correctly. There's just so many ways people can cheat with Nen. By whom? I hope it's by Bean. Oh, yeah, Hisoka can vote. Hey, a lot of familiar faces. Yeah. Kalua can vote. Hey, it's my boy. There he is. Mm, they all know Hisoka. Great place to scope out talent for harvesting, though. Oh, yeah, Jing is going squared. Mm -hmm. Did he always have this point system? This is new, right? Hey, Bisky's here, too. Everyone's here. In honor of Netero. <laughs> He's not sufficiently aroused yet. <laughs> it's a society. Is it, uh, Lumi? <laughs> Hold on a second. Jing, not even top 13. But he saw that coming. There he is, number 15. 
Oh, wait, 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 there's so, wait, there's so much to read. Wow, why is this so fun? It's a list. Kite, 21. Ouch. This must be a typo. Bisky is 16. Who voted for Hisoka? I wonder who voted for Gon. Sorry, I'm probably jumping the gun here. It's just exciting. Come to think of it, if I'm understanding this correctly, I'm surprised this even works because to have it be that you need 95% of people to show up among the hunter population, you can imagine there being just a hung election f forever. Kurapika just too busy with that gang life to show up and... What happened to Shalnark? That's concerning. Well, maybe none of the Phantom Troops showed up. Oh, redo it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This can go on forever. Oh, you didn't know? Where were you, Hisoka? Where were you? You missed such glorious potential. That explains where Rosoka was, he just didn't watch the news. That's <laughs> so funny, this is the show voicing my thoughts this whole time. Yeah, that's where he went. What's the risk for Kalua going home? Oh. Oh. Okay. Trouble in the otherwise peaceful and healthy Zoldic household. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Bizarre. That was a bizarre riff there. There you are. There you are. I had honestly forgotten about you a little bit, both of you. I really had the wrong idea about the extent to which Leorio and Kurapika would be in the show based on the first arc and the opening. They are not really here. I like this rendition. It's pretty looking. It's like Hunter x Hunter, the screensaver. Wow, simpler times. Will we get a chance to go back to that before the show ends? I hope so. It's really funny now that I'm this far in the show, being, I think, the longest show I've ever watched in videos. <laughs> to think back on my young, innocent, early Hunter x Hunter self, where I was speculating on Leorio's journey. <laughs> like, what? we didn't have time for Leorio's journey. We had ants. We had ants for more episodes than just about every other show I've watched, alone, by itself. Where would the Chimera Ant arc rank if it were to be tallied as its own show against all the other shows I've watched? Maybe third, tied with Avatar? And Leorio wasn't there. This was a surprisingly exciting episode for being a vote, <laughs> a political discussion. I can't wait to see more of the characters, especially best character, the rat. There's something about him that just makes me know I can trust him. How could he be evil if he's smiling and blonde? It just doesn't track. Jing also... <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. Not blinking at the fact that his son's in the hospital. True to my expectations in that regard. Shows up for Netero's vote, but not for his son. Because, you know, my genes. A little surlier than I expected, but in seeing it, it kind of clicks a bit. For me, the viewer, it cuts in the other direction as well, based on order of introduction in that Jing has Gon's DNA too. One thing about Jing's character that I thought about because of a friend of mine, there's a way to artificially inflate your value by making yourself scarce. It's a little bit of a psychological trick, speaking of which, and it does require a minimum level of esteem. But if people like you or are impressed by you or whatever and you set the precedent that you have so many things you could be doing and so you're never around and then suddenly you show up for something it has a way of having a huge impact a friend of mine does this not deliberately but this is the effect and this is where i first noticed this he's very well liked and respected but doesn't like to accept engagements or promise he'll be anywhere and everyone sort of gets used to that because he's very self-assured in doing his own thing and living his life the way he wants to live it but then he'll show up to things he's invited to and it's a big deal it, it like makes huge waves it's one of those things that scrambles your psychology like when other people give a lot of value to something, you're more inclined to give value to that thing yourself. And also how bravado and arrogance is often confused for confidence and ability. Scarcity is confused for value. And some people use that consciously or unconsciously to boost their own impact on attendance to things. You know where else this came up recently, but definitely not intentionally, is Mirio and Hunter x Hunter because he's so great, but also not really used in the show that much. And he's rarely announced. So like his arrival in the show is just such an honor. As I said in a comment, it's like the big brother figure you you adore suddenly showing up to your house party. You can tell Jing has established that. I mean, that's the way people talk about him. Like, wow, you're even you're here. Love him or hate him, they definitely respect him.